Hi guys, quick video today. I wanted to show you how to test the amperage on your um, pressure washer if you want to do amperage testing. Like if you're worried about it blowing a breaker or you know just want to see what it actually draws, I figured I would show you how to do that. There are really two things that you need. Um, number one, you need an amp meter. And then number two, you need a load splitter of some kind. So an amp meter is one of these things. It's got this clamp on the top of it. Um, you can get these from most hardware stores. This one's actually from Harbor Freight. I think it's like 29 bucks. I'm sure it goes on sale occasionally. Um, but you need something that supports whatever voltage you're running at. So for most people, that would be 120 volts. For me, it's 240. Um, and that has a reasonable amp uh, capacity. So this one goes all the way up to 400 amps. So we can see there's a 40 amp range, and that's the one that we'll be using for this test. Um, the next thing, uh, ideally you would have something called a load splitter. So um, powering the pressure washer, there's, there's a cord, and that cord has three wires in it. And basically what we need to do is we have to measure one of two wires. Um, so one of the wires is the ground, and then there is a hot and a neutral. And we have to measure one of those two wires, but not both. So if you take this and you just clamp it over the top of the cord, it'll actually read zero um, because it's reading, uh, alternating current goes in two directions. It's reading both wires at the same time. They cancel each other out. So you have to read just one of the wires. Um, so companies make something called a load splitter that um, does this for you. Basically, it gives you a place to clamp onto. And I'll put a link to one down below. And here's a picture so you can see what one looks like. If you don't have a load splitter, um, you can make one and you know in this case I'm going to make one because my pressure washer is 240 volt and I couldn't find a 240 volt load splitter. Uh, load splitters are pretty cheap. They're 10, 20 bucks somewhere thereabouts. Um, but you can do something like this. This is a short uh, extension cord. This is 12 gauge, 240 volts. Um, and it's uh, just a 12 inch um, extension cord. So we can use this um, to make a load splitter, a rudimentary load splitter. So what we're going to do, um, if you look at this, again, there's three wires inside. So I just want to break out the three individual wires so that I can put the clamp on one of them, right? So I've got a knife here. This is an Ulfa knife. Um, and basically what you want to do is you want to, I'm going to say score, but really it's like very lightly scratch the casing all the way around like this. Okay. Now you don't want to cut through it because you don't want to nick the wires that are down below. So you just want to like score it, right? So there's a little line in it, just like that. And then what you'll find is if you, um, if you bend the wire a little bit, you'll see that like that valley will open up and you could just very lightly with your knife, um, scratch through that. And you'll see like now I've, I've kind of got it through and as I just work it around, the casing will break all the way around. Again, we're just being careful. We don't want to nick any of our wires below. Okay. So now we've got our casing all the way through and then we can do um, the same thing, maybe a couple inches down the wire. So we'll do it like right here. All right. So we've completely gone through it in two sections. But as you can see, we're leaving the insulation of the underlying wires untouched. So last, we're going to score in this direction down the outside of the casing. I'm going to do that here on my workbench. Again, we want to be very light with that. So we can see if we just kind of get an edge started, you can peel this piece of casing right off. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to remove this piece of casing entirely from this section of wire. And there are other things you could use to make this. You could buy wire and plugs at your local hardware store, but that's going to cost a lot more money than this did. This was a $10 um, one foot extension cord. So now what we can see is there are three wires. So the next thing that you want to do is visually inspect right here and make sure that you didn't nick any of the wires or cut any of the wires and you have no conductors exposed. So you can see that I don't there. And then what we're going to do to test this is we're going to use um, the clamp on one of these wires. So you can do either the black or the white. You should use the black though, because the black is the, um, the line side and the white is your neutral. Um, especially like on 120 volts it is anyway. On this I have two lines because it's 240. All right, so here we can see our plug. We're going to plug this guy in. We're going to 
plug into this and now what we've done is made it so that our power is going through this amp meter so we can measure it without having to cut or damage or anything the cord in any sort of way. Obviously there are other ways you can do it. Maybe you have a long cord and you're working on cutting that down. You know you're going to cut that down. You could split the cord before you cut it down and test that way. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, turn the pressure washer on. I just have to connect a gun here really quick and I'm going to try to make sure that the camera gets a good shot of that screen. Turn on our water and then we'll turn on our pressure washer. Okay. Now what you want to do is uh, run it. So we're going to uh, attach a tip, we'll run the pressure washer and we'll see uh, what kind of readings we get. The first reading was a measurement of the pressure washer only with no tip, just the short gun and an open nozzle. The second one was with a 7.040 degree nozzle installed in the short gun. So that's it. We have an easy way to see what our current is on our pressure washer. Um, that can allow you to make changes because you know sizing up an orifice or sizing down an orifice can have an effect on um, the amperage and how hard the motor is working. Typically we're going to find that a pressure washer draws the most current when you've got it connected to a foam cannon because a foam cannon has the smallest orifice that is trying to push the water through to create that venturi effect to suck the soap up. Um, but you can test different different foam cannons, different nozzles, different um, orifices, you know, all kinds of different things and see how they affect your current. Um, this could be a good way for you to, um, you know, size things so that you're not popping a breaker. If you have a shared circuit, maybe uh, you don't have the luxury of having a 20 amp dedicated breaker for your pressure washer. Maybe you're sharing it with lights and a bunch of other stuff and you want to make sure that you um, have everything appropriately sized so that you're not drawing too much current. So this is how I test um, current on my pressure washer. There are obviously other ways to do it too. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you're 120 volt, I would just grab a load splitter. They even sell them at Harbor Freight for 120 volt. Um, they just don't sell them for uh, 240. So unfortunately, I don't really have a choice in the matter. Or if they do, Amazon doesn't have them. So thank you for watching. Have a great day.